So, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is the slide. If you are looking to planet Earth, what you see from outer space is more or less the sea, not the land. And that's one of the things which is of concern to us when we are living here. Because, just as an exercise, well, most of you, when looking to the left and then to the right, will see another person. And so you are the three. In 40 years' time, you are with four people. And that means that we are growing in the human population in 40 years' time to 9 to 10 billion people. And that's a lot. And whereas we all find um, <coughs> When catching fish in the North Sea, we are very much concerned how many fish we can catch and how many, um, or how the fish can su survive, etc., etc. We, we are naming that the carrying capacity of the North Sea. We never, never ask the question, what exactly is the carrying capacity of the human of the planet Earth for the human population? what is the number of people that can be fed, that can live, and that can enjoy the, uh, a, a, good, uh, a good environment. So, one of those things is that now, with seven more than seven billion people, we have a food security that is um, more or less the best we ever had, despite we have not a good distribution to every, every, every human being. But in 40 years' time, with 9 to 10 billion people, it will not be enough anymore. And the reason is that for the current agricultural um, production, we use more than twice what is good for planet Earth. So we are running out of natural resources one of them being fresh water. And um, that's a problem. And so we have to rethink our food security, our agricultural production, and to think, and we have heard this earlier today, we have to think in loops. So we have to reuse all the things we are considering as waste. And one of the things which we found out is that as soon as something is getting lost in the world, it's sooner or later, and later maybe sometimes centuries later, will end up in the sea. So the sea is a big ecosystem which is unendangered at this moment, and at the same time it's full of resources which are unused, we have to reuse to, um, to um, meet the demands of 10 billion people. At the same time, I'm more or less saying that 10 billion people may be also more or less enough. So we also have 40 years' time to think about reorganizing these kind of things. One of the most important things in food security is not sugars, carbohydrates, not fats. These are enough in the world. As long as we can use sugars to make bioenergy out of it, we have enough sugar, because huh, food is, I think, more important than energy. So that's one. The second thing, the fatty acids, the same thing. Lipids we use to make energy, we use for all kinds of green chemicals, and sometimes luxury things, and fatty acids, we have sufficient. It's protein. The reason that we are omnivorous organisms, so dependent on, um, by our digestive um, tracts um, on both animal and plant, uh, uh, plant origin food, is protein. Uh, and the reason, therefore, is that we need certain building blocks of the proteins. We cannot make them ourselves. 
These are the so-called essential amino acids. And these essential amino acids are coming from, from our food. Well, plant proteins thus far are less favorable, beneficial than animal pro proteins. And so the idea was we have to find a plant origin protein that is as good as, um, as proteins from animal production. And we have found them in green and um, brown and red seaweeds. And to illustrate you that we really found these things, we have also this kind of things with us. Um, this is a production line of just ordinary sea lettuce. 25% of the dry matter in these seaweeds, that is pure, high quality protein in everything the same as, for example, the proteins in milk, the proteins in, 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 in meat. And so we can use these proteins in future times. We have to develop new food products out of it. And there is also another very important thing. This is the only plant, the seaweeds, which take no drop of fresh water in the world, but seawater. And fresh water is at risk. Uh, there are a lot of places in the world you have to ask people the very cynical question, well, is it thirst or is it hunger to die of, uh, for example. And so, when we can more than double the plant production by seaweeds in sea farms, we end, uh, save some space at the land site, for na nice nature, etc., etc., and we can have our food, and we recycle a lot of natural resources, which are already getting lost from the um, from the um, <coughs> from the land side. The next slide is a very boring slide, because a desert. Yeah, well, yes, it's a desert. Something is lacking there. It's water. And there we have the ocean, and something is lacking there too, because there is nothing, as you see, that is nutrients. Plants need nutrients to grow. And so we bring from deeper water layers in the sea certain nutrients which were getting lost from the land side to the surface and grow their seaweeds. And the idea is, amongst others, along the shores of the Sahara Desert. Because the, sea, the, the water inside these seaweeds, in this box there is seawater, but inside these seaweeds the water is fresh water. And that means that if we are uh, producing in front of the Sahara sh um, coastline, let's say 25 ton of dry matter, it would be mere, more, then we also produce 125 tons of fresh water. And we have to do that by 10, so one square kilometer of sea farms will produce good proteins to uh, sustain the coastal community. And we also have the water in the Sahara conditions for one hectare of coastal agriculture. So, it is bringing agriculture, it is producing our proteins, it's producing water, it's bringing phosphate back to the land side, and below the sea farms, fish may grow as well. Well, it starts by just seeing it. Not very far away from here, in Zeeland, schouwen delfhoek this was the first test facility, let's say an experimental station as we have in agriculture to try things around potatoes. We have at this facility, we have learned ourselves to have a sustainable seaweed cultivation. And you see here the first photographs of the sea lettuce. This one's below the surface 
and above. And that was the, the very first um, uh, um, cultivation because it was these this small pieces of sea lettuce and in 14 days it was these pieces of, of things. Wild plants still, huh? there's no documentation anyhow. Yeah, and when we are going to the North Sea, the first attempts were there, we will have these brown kelps, and these brown kelps are very important because these are the very strong, big seaweeds, and we can grow them on the North Sea. And one of the nice things is, it is thrilling for farmers, because farming in the wintertime in Holland, in the open, well, there are crops outside, but they are just sleeping, huh? so that they can wake up a little bit earlier in the spring. But these things are just growing in wintertime. From August planting in March, April, they have these huge taluses, um, uh, leaflet organs, organism, organs to produce uh, proteins and very special sugars. And you also see my two colleagues, which are very um, <coughs> sportive, uh, Man and woman, uh, what well, this is like nice in summertime, but they also do this at this moment eh, in winter time, at 20 centigrade. Yeah, so seaweeds will ensure that we will have a good <coughs> food security. It will bring back a lot of micronutrients like jodium, like selenium, back into our food. It will bring a, a lot of other things back to the land. And what is the nice story behind it, that we have learned from old agronomic books, we, all, we, we, we were long forgotten about, that seaweeds were already for ages, ages, centuries, the green manure in old farmhouses. Because plant production, like wheat, and grasslands, big grasslands, were alongside the shores in estuarine delta areas. And we have learned that it is just written about in medieval books. Huh? Next science, next, not, nothing about nature and these, these prime, uh, prime scientific um, periodicals. Old books. And that is very important. Maybe even that seaweeds were at the beginning, the very start of agriculture itself. Because if there is nothing, no agriculture, you start with some food for your plants. It's not the other way around. Yeah? So it is very likely that seaweeds in estuarine areas were already at the origin of agriculture 10,000 years ago. And now they will be in the front of the revolution that we have to double agriculture production, we have more than to double the plant production to sustain the world, to save water, to be as efficient with natural resources as possible to do these things. We have addressed it, and the good idea, the good um, <coughs> thing is now that think of 10 billion people and think of <coughs> how many proteins a human being needs. That's 0.75 gram per kilogram body weight a day. And all this will mean that we only need 2% of the world ocean surfaces to sustain, to, to produce the, the proteins for, you, for human, the human population over 40 years, which is four times Portugal, which is three 160,000 square kilometers. The last thing sounds very big. It, it is big. But still, it is only a minor part of the, um, of the ocean environment. So yes, this world is more or less ocean. And that is my message. Yes, therefore, to make it more sustainable. Thank you very much.